All right, we finally did the part of the series everyone has been waiting for. We're going to go ahead and turn on live trading for our bot. Up to this point, we've been doing backtesting, which is testing tra trading strategies over historical data. Now we're going to see how our strategies hold up with real-time data coming in. Uh, there are a few major changes that will need to be made, so I've broken this up into several parts. In part one, we're going to create the main script for live trading that will live separately from our backtesting script. What we're going to discover is that with backtesting and live data, the structure of the data is slightly different. Uh, with backtesting, we are dealing with candlesticks, which have several dis different data points um, of a period of time, like open, close, uh, average, high, and low. Uh, with live trading, we just have a distinct price data coming in every tick. Um, so if you recall from the last video, we had a somewhat similar problem with combining data from multiple exchanges. The structure of the data was just different enough to cause us pretty serious problems. So, in part two, we'll be, we'll be solving that issue and making a better data type to store everything in. In part three, we'll be abstracting our trading indicators even more so, so we can build a more robust trading strategy and take advantage of the more robust data storage we create in part two. Then finally, we'll add some more advanced logging functionality, and then we'll have a bot that can run in our sleep and make us a ton of money. So, without further ado, Let's set up our basic live trading script. All right, so first of all, we took, I took backtest.py, created a new script called live.py. It's basically kind of the same thing, so, but there are some key differences here. Uh, before, when you created a new chart, it would return a bunch of candlestick data. Um, we're simply passing that candlestick data one at a time into our strategy object um, and over time, that would evaluate trades, place trades, close trades, that kind of thing. Uh, with the live script, we're not getting candlestick data. We're just getting a single point of data um, in, a, in a predetermined amount of time. So here, every 10 seconds, I'm getting a new data point and adding that to the strategy. And the strategy then uh, acts accordingly based on how we have it set up. So in order to reconcile um, these two different types of data, like I said, in, in part two of this series, we're going to actually create a whole new part of data that can handle both of the inputs. But for now, just to get things up and running and to make sure this live.py script runs like we expect it to, um, I kind of fudge some things over here in bot strategy. So the first change I made was to comment out um, any indicators that we're using the close part of the candlestick. So now only things that use one price point in each candlestick will work. And in part two of this, once again, we're going to fix that. For now, we're just trying to kind of get our minimum viable product up and running. So really, that's the only change we need to make um, in order to get the live trading at least doing something. Um, once again, this bot is not complete, so I don't recommend running this code live with actual money on the line. And I don't have it actually opening and closing trades yet. I still have what we had in Trading Bot Part 2 up and running, where it just creates a visual indicator where it would have opened a trade or closed a trade. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So in this case, before we were running backtest, which still works. So backtest still works the same as it always did, uh, minus if you were using indicators that use that uh, candlestick close data. Now we can also run live.py. That's our new script. And this works as expected. Uh, we hard-coded in that 10-second uh, period. So every 10 seconds it gets a new price data for the chart we chose, which was um, uh, Bitcoin to Monero on the Poloniex exchange. And here, our, our strategy was so that simple one where if the price falls below the moving average, it will open a trade. So it didn't actually open the trade again. This is all just kind of fake trading at this point until we get the live part of the trading uh, finished. So really, it's that simple um, to switch from backtesting to live. It's almost exactly the same code, just with some minor differences. Uh, we now just have 
uh, some things we need to reconcile with the data coming in to the bot strategy object. We'll do that in part two of this series, uh, which will be out tomorrow. All right, we'll talk to you then.